This YouTube video shows a Tesla SUV with six people in it beating a $200,000 Porsche Turbo in a drag race. In this video, we're going to break down that specific drag race, and then we're going to look generally at how weight affects performance and acceleration. In this drag race that you can find on the Drag Times YouTube channel, they race a 992 Turbo S against a Model X Plaid. The caveat is the Plaid has six people in it while the Porsche just has the driver. You can see the specs on your screen here. Despite weighing almost 2,000 pounds more, the Model X Plaid does make up for it with more power. You can see the power to weight ratios with the Model X taking it by just a little bit. If we account for these specific driving conditions, we're going to add 200 pounds for the driver in the Turbo S. So that brings power to weight close to 6 pounds per horsepower. And then we're going to add 1,000 pounds. This is literally a fully loaded SUV. And that brings power to weight up to 6.26 pounds per horsepower. I'm going to tell you why these numbers are important later, but let's see how this drag race looks in the motor matchup simulator. On your screen here is the motor matchup drag race simulator. We put the exact same conditions in the simulator as the drag times race in real life. We have the Model X Plaid on top, which is fully loaded, coming in at 6,300 pounds against a stock Turbo S on bottom with just a driver. We're adding 200 pounds. We can see the Turbo S gets off the line much harder. And then through the middle of the race, the Plaid starts gaining ground and both cars come in at about a 10.3 with the Model X coming in at 139 miles an hour. So you can see the results are pretty similar to the real life drag race. The numbers in the simulator are slightly better for both cars and the Porsche is about a full second faster, but the simulator is giving pretty consistent results to real life. So let's take a closer look and see how this SUV with six people in it is able to be a $200,000 supercar in a drag race. We talked about weight and power. Now we're going to talk about gearing and torque. In the 99 Turbo S, it has a peak torque rating of 590 pound feet. It has a first gear ratio of 4.89 and a final drive ratio of 3.02. It's totally fine if you don't know about gear ratios or what that means, just stick with me for a second. To find wheel torque, we can multiply the motor torque by the gear ratios. So we have 590, which is the motor torque, multiplied by the first gear ratio, 4.89, multiplied by the final drive, 3.02, and we see that the Porsche has a peak potential wheel torque of 8,700 pound feet, which is a really big number. For the Model X Plaid, it's a little bit different, but the same concepts apply. Peak motor torque is higher at 1,050 foot pounds. That's a number advertised by Tesla. It doesn't have any gears, so the first gear ratio doesn't matter. It's just one, but it has a final drive ratio that's much higher at 7.56. So instead of multiplying by a gear ratio and a final drive, all we have to do is take our motor torque and multiply it by our final drive, and we see that maximum wheel torque in the Plaid is almost 8,000 pound-feet. So at this point, you might be thinking that because the Turbo S weighs less and makes more peak wheel torque, it should be way faster. But the Turbo S has an 8-speed gearbox and has to shift into second gear at about 40 miles an hour. So at 40 miles an hour, when that first gear shift happens, we see peak wheel torque dropped from 8,700 pound-feet to 5,600 pound-feet because that second gear ratio is only 3.17. And that's why the Turbo S is able to get off the line so hard. Zero to 30 miles an hour takes only about one second in the Turbo S. And since the Tesla doesn't have any gears, it's going to make that max torque all the way up to 5,200 RPMs when power becomes a limiting factor. And 5,200 motor RPM happens at about 60 miles an hour. So the Tesla is making max wheel torque about 8,000 pound feet all the way until 60 miles an hour and then it starts to taper off. We actually have a sponsor in today's video, the first sponsor for Motor Matchup. It's Simply Carbon Fiber. They sent me this really cool carbon fiber phone case that I put on my iPhone 11 Pro and they sent this super cool lightweight wallet which is made of 100% carbon fiber. I have some cash on the back as well as cards and my ID. This thing is super strong, super light, and way less bulky than my existing wallet. And it's this really cool gloss carbon fiber as you can see there. And my cards just pop out like that. Check them out at simplycarbonfiber.com. They sell a bunch of different carbon fiber accessories. They sell watches, sunglasses, wallets, phone cases. I'll put a link in the description as well as my code MM10, which gets you 10% off at checkout. 
Go check them out and let's get right back into the video. I wanna quickly talk about a very simple but very important physics concept. It's Newton's second law and it says that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So we can apply this extremely generic equation to find the max theoretical acceleration of pretty much any car. So first we're gonna start with our simple equation, force is equal to mass times acceleration. And we wanna know what is the force being applied to push the car down the road. So first we need to find the torque that's being applied on the wheels. And we went through an example of that earlier with the Turbo S and the Model X Plaid. We take the torque coming out of the engine, multiply it by the gear ratio, and multiply it by the final drive ratio. Remember, in the Tesla, there are no gears, so that gear ratio is just one. We can then convert wheel torque to wheel force. So we take the torque on the wheel and divide by the radius of the tire. This comes from a really simple torque equation. Torque is equal to force times lever arm. The lever arm is the radius of the tire. And since we know the mass of the car, better known as curb weight, we can actually solve for A, and we now know the peak theoretical acceleration of whatever car we're calculating. So we're gonna jump back to the Model X Plaid and do a full calculation. I already gave you a lot of these figures. I'm gonna do this calculation in metric units, so I apologize to those that have not seen these before, but they do make more sense when you start working with them. Wheel torque comes in at 10,700 Newton meters, and to get wheel force, we're gonna take our wheel torque and divide by the radius of our tire, that's our lever arm, and we get about 29,000 newtons of wheel force. Using our super simple equation, acceleration is equal to force divided by mass, we take our wheel force, about 29,000 newtons, divide by our curb mass in kilograms, and we see that peak theoretical acceleration in the Model X Plaid is about 11.8 meters per second squared. And that's equivalent to about 1.2 Gs of acceleration. We can actually calculate the zero to 60 time if you were to sustain this acceleration through the entire run. And so you take 60 miles an hour in meters per second, 26.82 meters per second, and divide by your acceleration. And you see that your theoretical zero to 60 time would be about 2.27 seconds. Cool, so if we use the same exact method to calculate peak acceleration of the car with added mass, it's really easy. So our wheel torque and wheel force are not gonna change. The motors are not gonna create more power or torque because we're adding weight. The only variable we're changing is the mass. So we're gonna use our trusty equation, acceleration is equal to force divided by mass, but this time our mass has a thousand more pounds, which is about 440 kilograms. So we take our 29,000 Newtons, divide by about 2,900 kilograms, and we see that peak acceleration comes in at about 9.95 meters per second squared, or about one G of acceleration. And our zero to 60 time is gonna drop to 2.7 seconds with that added weight. Keep in mind, these calculations are for max theoretical acceleration. It does not take into account the negative forces acting on the car, and it's not taking into account the diminishing torque curve or power curve. In the bottom right, you can see the power curve on the Model X Plaid. At about 5,000 RPMs, that torque taper does start to happen, and that's why you don't see linear acceleration through the entire quarter mile. The car starts to accelerate slower and slower as it approaches the finish line. And lastly, it does not account for gear changes. The Porsche has an eight speed transmission. And although it's lightning fast, it does create some delays and some dips off of that peak power. We're now gonna apply this to a bunch of different cars and see how they react to different weight changes. On your screen here is a side-by-side -side comparison with three very different EVs. On the left, we have the Aptera. In the middle, we have the Tesla Model S Long Range. And on the right, we have the 9,000 pound Hummer EV. In the next row, I have wheel torque. So in the Aptera, it's about 1,500 pound feet. In the Tesla, it's about 5,000 pound feet. This is not the Plaid, this is the Long Range, so keep that in mind. And in the Hummer, it's 11,500 pound feet of wheel torque. I used the same exact methods earlier to calculate peak theoretical acceleration with no added weight. The Aptera comes out to 3.13 seconds, the Tesla 2.91 seconds, and the Hummer 3.1 seconds. And then in the next row, I put their advertised zero to 60 times. So you can see they're relatively close. The theoretical time is generally a little bit faster as we experienced with the Model X calculation. The Hummer is coming in a little bit slower than advertised. I think it has to do with the tires I use to calculate. I'm using the bigger all-terrain tires, which have a huge diameter. 
I'm not exactly sure where the three seconds is coming from, what tire setup they're using, but yeah, I don't wanna ramble on that. That's just a little caveat that I wanted to point out. So I'm gonna add 500 pounds into each one of these vehicles. You could think of it as two passengers and some cargo. When you add 500 pounds into the Aptera, the zero to 60 time drops from 3.13 seconds theoretically to 4.35 seconds. So about a 1.2 second slower zero to 60. When you add 500 pounds to the Tesla, the zero to 60 only drops by 0.3 seconds. And when you add 500 pounds to the Hummer, an already 9,000 pound vehicle, the zero to 60 time drops by less than 0.2 seconds, so you're barely gonna feel anything. And that's why the Model X Plaid is able to get away with packing in six people and still outperforming the Porsche is because the car already weighs 5,400 pounds. So as a percentage, six people is not that much. Whereas the Porsche, if you were to pack in four people, let's say cram a couple people in the back, I don't know how you do that, but that percentage is gonna be huge compared to the percentage of the Tesla. So let's come up with a simple heuristic for how much acceleration will be impacted by a simple weight change. So it's two simple steps. First, take your car's driving weight as a percentage of its base weight. This will be a number greater than one, and then multiply that ratio by the advertised zero to 60 time. And that'll give you the rough zero to 60 time with the added weight. And it also works backwards if you remove weight, but your ratio will be less than one. So super simple example, we have a Model 3 Performance that weighs about 4,050 pounds. We're gonna add two occupants or 400 pounds, and we see that our ratio is 4,448 divided by 4,048 multiplied by the advertised zero to 60 time, 3.1 seconds, and we get a rough zero to 60 time of about 3.4 seconds. It's a really crude calculation, and if you're ever out on the drag strip or you're out on the street and you're just curious, mm, I wonder how much this weight is affecting my car's performance, you can do this simple calculation in your head and get a really rough estimate. One thing I didn't cover in this video is what happens at speed. And it's generally the same, although you have a lot more negative forces acting on the car, and weight will actually have a compound effect. The whole point of the video was to show that the lighter your car is, the more a weight change is gonna affect it. We saw that with that little Aptera, adding 500 pounds really, really slowed down the zero to 60 time, while adding 500 pounds to the heavy Hummer is not really gonna impact the zero to 60 time. And that's why hypercar manufacturers and of course race car manufacturers will spend huge amounts of money to pull weight from cars because generally those cars are already lightweight. So even tiny weight savings are gonna have massive impacts on acceleration and cornering performance. I'm gonna leave you guys with some food for thought and pose the question, will we see autonomous drag racing in the future? I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll put a link to that real drag race between the Tesla and the Porsche in the description below. Otherwise, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.